Capo Kakinen shut the door on the New York Islanders, and Timo Meyer recorded a Gordie Howe hat trick. He scored a power play goal. He got the primary assist on Jack Hughes' goal, but he also went toe to toe with Anders Lee. Was it justified? Who was in the right? Who was in the wrong? Spoiler alert, it was justified because Lee had a dangerous play on Heischer. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Happy Monday. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, plug play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Every game counts for the New Jersey Devils if they want the slightest chance of sneaking their way into the playoffs. Now, I talked about it in my previous episode that it is not a good chance that the Devils do make the playoffs. However, it's still nice to see them come away with the win, especially against a divisional opponent. In this matchup against the New York Islanders, they came away with a shutout victory by a score of 4 to nothing. We're going to talk about the infamous incident that took place towards the end of the second period between Anders Lee and also Nico Heischer that resulted in Lee and Meyer going toe-to-toe. In the second segment, like I do with every post-game recap episode after a win, I will name some honorable mentions and also my three stars to the game. And then in the third and final segment, I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. Now, before we get into the tussle match between Meyer and Lee, let's talk about some of the buildup that led up to it. Because going into this matchup, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I was a little bit nervous. I understand that the Islanders have had their fair share of struggles to close out the season, similar to the Devils. But when looking at some of the scores that the Islanders have found themselves in a couple weeks ago against the Ducks, they won 6-1. to one. However, a few days ago against the Detroit Red Wings, they lost 6-3. to three. But just a few days ago on Saturday against the Winnipeg Jets, they won 6-3. to three. I was a little confused. I didn't know which version of the Islanders were the Devils going to get. But based on how the season has gone for the Devils, I thought their luck would just run out and they were going to run into a red-hot Islanders team and the Islanders would put six or more goals on them because we already saw the Devils surrender five goals to the Ottawa Senators, a team that had not won in regulation since February 22nd prior to their matchup at the Prudential Center. But Did the Devils dominate from start to finish? Not exactly, but at least they came away with the shutout victory, and that is not an easy thing to do. We talk about the wild, wild west all the time in pop culture. However, let's talk about the wild, wild east, because despite all the struggles, despite the inconsistency, despite essentially being sellers at the deadline, the Devils are five points out of the second position in the wild card. The Lightning hold the first position with 85 points, and I think they're going to coast their way into the playoffs as long as they play their cards correctly. But the Capitals, Alexander Ovechkin, man, oh, man. I know father time is undefeated, but Ovechkin is not retiring until he breaks the all-time goals record that is obviously held by Wayne Gretzky. I don't think any diehard hockey fans had that in their bingo cards because everything has to go right. Congratulations to Alexander Ovechkin. I'm just going to say it early. Like I said, that man is not retiring until he breaks that record. But the Detroit Red Wings, they lost one of their more recent matchups to the Predators. Now they're at 78 points. Islanders are still ahead of the Devils with 75. Devils have 74. Like I said in my prior post-game recap episode, it's not a good chance that the Devils make the playoffs, but at this point, you got to play hard. And uh, Capo Kakinen was actually quoted to say post game, we're at the point of the year where every game matters against a team we're kind of chasing right ahead of us. Huge, massive win. And he is right. It is a huge, massive win. 
But the one thing I worry about is that the Devils waited a little too long to try to make that push because they can't seem to win consistently. Like every time they put up a couple of big wins, it seems like they lose a stinker because they beat the Penguins, then they beat the Jets. But against the Senators team, that I think the Devils were the favorites. That game went into the toilet, coming on the losing end, 5-2. to two, And now it's the second half of a back-to-back and we all know that the Devils usually struggle with back-to-back games, especially the second half of one. I was a little nervous, and the first period kind of confirmed my suspicion because at the conclusion of the first 20 minutes of the game, the shots on goal differential, 13-5 to in favor of the Islanders, and there were five penalties combined between both respective teams. And this was the issue I was running into, which is, are the Devils going to make the same mistake that they did with the Senators just in last night's matchup, which is they spent too much time in the penalty box. They let the uh, opponent get too many shots on their goalie and they just have no offensive momentum. That was one of the things that was in the back of my mind. But to begin the second period, the Devils repeated what they did against centers, which is they got off to a really good start. Timo Meyer, he scored on the power play. Then a few minutes later, Jack Hughes scored at even strength. Alexander Holtz, a few minutes later, it's three to nothing Devils. And now the question is, they got the momentum. Can they maintain it? And that's exactly what they did. And unfortunately, it was picked up by the Islanders captain because what happened towards the end of the second period is what made headlines. Basically, Nico Heischer, he's playing the puck and Anders Lee is coming full steam ahead. He has no intent of stopping and he's trying to poke the puck on free Unfortunately, he turned his body and Lee's left knee and Heischer's left knee collided. Heischer goes tumbling down face first, and it looks very concerning. And Timo Meyer, he did not take exception to that. Immediately dropped the mitts to defend his captain. Here's my thoughts on the matter. I actually listened to the Islanders telecast to get a different perspective. And like I just said, it seemed like Lee was just trying to poke the puck on free. He turned his body sideways. And as a result, his knee collided with Heischer's knee. That is a dangerous play. I think another thing that the Islanders broadcasters brought up was that they felt as though Lee was frustrated because I talked about how this was a must win for the Devils. This is also a must win for the Islanders because they basically need to win out if they want any chance of making the playoffs. And I think once Lee sees the scoreboard, three to nothing, game is winding down, team is most likely not going to make the comeback. His frustrations got the best of him. And as a result, that's what unfortunately took place. And then immediately the question followed, would Lee be ejected? Because keep in mind, this is the second time this season in which he's gone toe-to-toe with the Devils player. Remember back in late November, he went at it with Brendan Smith towards the end of the game. I believe he also got ejected in that game, and he left the game with a bloody nose because Brendan Smith, he's a big guy, and he didn't take any prisoners. But anyway, back to this game, the official assessment was that Lee was given a penalty for kneeing Nico Heischer. Okay, that, that's clear as day. Both Lee and Meyer were giving fighting penalties, and Lee got a game misconduct. So he had to hit the showers early, and Timo Meyer was given an instigator penalty. Timo had to sit for a significant amount of time. I believe that was 14 minutes total, and that obviously leaked over into the third period. That's how Meyer got most of his rest in the third period. But anyway, that was a very dangerous play. Obviously, all Devils discourse, they were hoping that Heischer did not sustain any serious injury because we've already seen it happen this year where players go after Nico or Jack, and unfortunately, they get injured as a result, and sometimes they miss time. But luckily, he sure did return in the third period, and I think everybody was happy to see that. Now, Curtis McDermott did not play in this game due to injury, but that's one of the reasons why the devil signed him, which is for situations like this, he's supposed to drop the mitts and go toe-to-toe with Lee. But I am so glad that Meyer stepped up in his place, even if he did lose the fight in the end, because... It is important to establish that you cannot touch the star players like that for the Devils. Otherwise, there's going to be serious consequences. That's why P.K. Subban, 
He went on the Pat McAfee show a few months back and he described a similar circumstance, ironically, against the Islanders in which he had to give somebody the business because they touched Jack Hughes and you can't do that to the star player. Devils weren't going to make the playoffs anyway. And you have to send that sort of message. And I get that Timo has been one of the best players for the Devils the last month or so. But in that case, a message needed to be sent. So I give Timo Meyer his props for doing so. I get it. It should really be Curtis McDermott, but he wasn't playing in this game. And you got to try to, once again, send that message to not only the Islanders, but the entire NHL in general, saying that if you touch the captain, if you put him into a, a dangerous position, you're going to be given the business and you will be dealt with. But anyway, third period comes around. Nico Heischer is back, obviously. It was the Capo Kakinen show as he was robbing the Islanders point blank, similar to what Jake Allen has been doing the last few outings. And we're definitely going to talk about Kakinen a little later on in the episode. But Chris Tierney, the Cobra, got the empty netter goal. 4 nothing victory for the Devils against their divisional rival. Not the best start, but like I said, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And I would say the Devils did finish off decently against this Islanders team. Okay, I'm going to name my three stars and give an honorable mention momentarily. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about the Game Time app. I actually enjoy using it. I've used it to buy tickets before, whether it was basketball or baseball. Very easy to use. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, let's name my personal three stars of the game. But before we do, honorable mention, Alexander Holtz, who got the third goal of the game for the Devils. I don't agree with Travis Green for a lot of things. However, I like how he's been utilizing Alexander Holtz. And I get what I see on social media saying that he turns the puck over, his stick work is not the best. I get all that, but he's still a young player And you got to let him make those mistakes so that way he can learn from it. And that way he can take it into the offseason and try to improve upon next year. But I think the big thing that we wanted to see from Alexander Holtz this year was just the scoring. Because he is a capable goal scorer. He got his 16th goal of the season. And that doesn't happen every day. And by the way, shout out to Shimon the Mets who also got his 16th assist of the year. So the young guns for the Devils, Alexander Holtz and Shimon the Mets, working together to give the Devils a 3 to nothing lead. Just wanted to give Holtz his uh, flowers and just know that I still back him up despite some of the other issues to his game. He will get better over time. I guarantee it. He has definitely exceeded my personal expectations. All right. My third star, I'm going to have to give it to Jack Hughes, who netted his 24th goal of the season. And it's actually quite funny how he got it because this has made its way on social media because – Uh, In their defensive end, the Islanders were searching for the puck, and three players collided. It was uh, Dobson and Horvat. I don't know who the third player was, but they collided, and it was like bowling pins. They they all went tumbling on down, and Bill Spaulding on air knew that it was trouble right away, and Jack Hughes made the Islanders pay for their mistake. And they must be giving Lou Lamorello a heart attack up in that press box, but That was pretty cool to see because literally like those three players collided and just went tumbling on down. It's something you see in a movie or or something like that. But Jack Hughes continues his success this season against the Islanders. He always seems to kick into high gear. We all know what he did the first go round. And now in this game, once again, picking up a couple points, he got the primary assist on Timo Meyer's power play goal. And now, my second star, it has to go to Kapo Kakinen for getting the shutout because he had not played in a few games. Last time he played prior to this Islanders matchup was against the Arizona Coyotes, and he was taken out after the first period because the Devils needed a momentum shift because they were down by a few goals to Arizona, and Travis Green did it to try to shake things up just a little bit more. 
and he's been riding the pine, watching Jake Allen go to work. But it, sooner or later, Kapo Kakinen was bound to get his chance. And a lot of people were wondering, why was Isaac Poulter brought up? Because Poulter served as the backup in this game to Kakinen. Well, it was just to secure Jake Allen a full day off. So no matter what happened this game, Jake Allen was not going to come in. It was either going to be Kakinen or Poulter. And similar to what I said in segment one, Kakinen, he was making those crucial saves in the third period. He had a bit of a scare when former devil Kyle Palmieri supposedly scored on him. However, the referees waved it off. They looked at the replay, and it was deemed that Palmieri used his hand to knock it on in. And they, and as a result, the shutout was still alive. But I really liked some of the crucial saves that Kakinen was making as of late as the game uh, went on. And it, it sort of reminded me of what Jake Allen has been doing for Devils, which is when you notice Jake Allen making those saves, he just flows really nicely. Like he doesn't just try. He's not stiff out there, similar to what might have been the downfall of Vitek Vanacek. It's just like poetry and motion. And that's especially what I saw in the third period for Kakinen. And I got to shout out my guy Chico Resch for giving me that sort of insight and providing that uh, open eye type of analysis because now I see it from a different perspective. And I think it was on full display for Kapo Kakinen. Glad that he came to the rescue in this matchup. And now my first star, the Gordie Howe hat trick, Timo Meyer. He got a power play goal. He got the primary assist on Jack Hughes's goal. And he got into a fight, like I said, in segment one. And he is the first Devils player to officially get a Gordie Howe hat trick since Sergei Kalilin in 2016 against the New York Rangers. Here's the thing. I'm going to have to challenge that stat a little bit, and maybe I might be wrong, but are we forgetting game three of the second round of the playoffs last season against the Carolina Hurricanes in which Jack Hughes had two goals, two assists, and he went toe-to-toe with Sebastian Ajo? Obviously, it wasn't listed as a fight. That's not what the assessment was between both those players. But to Jack Hughes' standards, that is a fight because it was a wrestling match in which Jack Hughes shoved Aho down onto the ground and was giving him a little bit of a shove, but no punches were thrown. But in my opinion, I think he is the first Devils player, Timo Meyer is, to get a Gordie Howe trick since Jack Hughes of last year. I count that as a Gordie Howe trick. I stand by it because once again, to Jack Hughes' standards, that is a fight. Curtis Lazar, no. Timo Meyer, no. Curtis McDermott, hell no. But Jack Hughes, absolutely. Because when are we going to see Jack Hughes go toe to toe with a player like wrestle him down to the ground? You're not going to see that too often. The standards are a little bit different, but digressing a little bit, Timo Meyer continues his strong play the last month or so, sticking up for his captain and coming up big with a couple points in the second period. That is why he is my first star. I told you guys, there is no stopping Timo Meyer once he gets it going. But I'm glad that he made headlines by netting himself a Gordie Howe trick, which, fun fact, I think Gordie Howe, during his entire career, only had two of his supposed hat trick, in which you get a goal, you get an assist, and you get into a fight. I, I don't think he did that too often. I think Bill Spaulding also acknowledged it on the telecast but some food for thought and still fun to discuss but anyway those are my three stars of the game now before we compare the stats give the devil's letter grade and get out of here let me tell you guys about sleeper because regardless of where the devils are at in the standings i want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fancy hockey on sleeper the official daily fancy app of the locked on nhl network sleepers are number one choice for daily fancy sports especially daily fancy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fancy hockey contests. You don't just have to participate in hockey. You can also participate in fancy football, basketball, baseball, college football, all on Sleeper. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Hughes, Brad, Heischer, Kakinen will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. Use the promo code Locked on NHL and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit, terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. 
All right, let's compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade, and get out of here. Shots on goal differential, 36 to 30 in favor of the Islanders. Once again, that was a little concerning, especially in the first period, but the Devils weathered the storm. I will give them credit. Faceoff percentage, 56.1% to the Devils, 43.9% to the Islanders. Power play, Devils were one for four. Islanders were zero for five. Hits, 20 to 15 in favor of the Islanders. Block shots, 24 to 15 in favor of the Islanders. Giveaways, 13 to 2 in favor of the Islanders. Takeaways, 7 to 4 in favor of the Islanders. If I had to give the Devils a letter grade, I think I would give them a solid B in this case because it wasn't the most dominant performance, but they still got the shutout. I, I, I can't deny that. They gave me a heart attack early on in the game, but I think they started to settle down, especially once they started to get those goals. And Obviously, Nico Heischer's uh, situation left me a little concerned, but glad that he returned in the third period. I would say solid B. Wasn't the most dominant shutout performance you'll ever see. Far from worse, though, and I think they were still really good in this game as it progressed. And if you were to look at the deserved win o meter somehow, some way, it heavily favors the Islanders, but I don't, I, I'm not going to uh, pay attention to that. I'm just going to, Ignore that in that sort of circumstance. But let me know what you guys think. What did you think of this matchup for Devils? Where do you think they go from here? Leave your thoughts on, on Anders Lee and the fight that took place between him and Timo Meyer and that knee-to-knee -knee contact he had with Nico Heischer. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMat4 or the show's X page app at Locked on Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.